Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is John and I'm the founder of Odyssey Games and today we're going to be talking about getting your games noticed and downloaded on the App Store and on Steam. You know, whether you're making uh, mobile games for Google Play or Apple App Store or if you're making PC games for Steam, there's a science behind getting your games noticed. This is all done through the power of ASO or App Store optimization. As of June 2020, there are over 3 million apps on the Google Play Store and over 23,000 games on Steam. So getting your games noticed can be near impossible, but not for us because we know how to finesse the system and use ASO to our advantage. So when it comes to getting your game found on the App Store or on Steam, you need to make sure you're checking off a few boxes here because you can be sure Apple's App Store, Google's Play Store, and Steam are all analyzing your game to find certain uh, ranking factors, right? They're looking at your game title, the description, the length of the description, keywords, usage metrics, uninstall rate, ratings and reviews, replying to the reviews, downloads, in-app purchases, and several other factors these marketplaces use. All of these can affect who finds your game and where they're gonna find your game. This is why it's important to make it easy for those who do play your game to be able to leave a review. If you're making a mobile game or a game for PC, make sure you put a link somewhere in your game for the player to easily find and click on and have that link lead them to the App Store to leave a review. Obviously, these reviews will help. It is also worth mentioning that there are certain things that can actually hurt you from being found, especially if you want to use something like Google Ads to promote your game. And these things are sensitive topics and events. I'll add a link in the description that covers this so that you can read through it and know what can actually hurt your ads. And if they can hurt your ads, you better believe that it will hurt your app store optimization strategy these sensitive topics do change over time. Another big way to reach more people is to integrate localization into your game. This means having it set up so users can change the language of the game. This is not something you can do with a Google Translate, so don't even try that. It may seem like it can work, but there are a lot of nuances when it comes to languages. Just hire a service to do this for you. Different services will have different experiences and reviews, I included a link in the description that will help you compare different services and select the right one for you. There's not much to say about localization other than if more people can play your game then you just increase your potential customer pool that can search for your game and play it. Now I want to take a moment to go over some services that can help you with your ASO. It is definitely worth a look at some of these services because you can see what they're doing and how they do it and then integrate their strategies into yours especially if you're just making games as a side hustle your time will be consumed with making games and working at your primary job that you just won't have time to worry about replying to reviews and your ASO score or you don't have time to learn how to properly post your games on Steam and the Play Store right now, a couple examples of these services are MoPeak and AppRadar. You've probably heard of these services, but for different reasons. I'm going to focus on their App Store optimization services. So we're at AppRadar. It's just one of the services that you can pay for or do their free service that will allow you to use their technology and their experience to help boost your your game's uh, App Store optimization rating. No. It tells you how it can help you, the App Radar tool. So, App Radars are all in one App Store optimization tool to help you obviously become more efficient and more effective. You know, you can see how optimized their app is. They give you a score. Let's see. Yeah. So they give you an ASO score, they tell you what you can do to optimize it, you know, your suggestions, where it ranks in that particular language and country, because your ASO is going to be different for the United States versus the United Kingdom. How does it rank amongst the Spanish language or the English language and different things like that. And we can look at the pricing. See, they offer a free 
tier, starter, advanced, and expert. For the free, you get up to 20 keywords to search from, two competitor apps to compare yours to, and one country per an app. Whereas as you start paying for it, you get more features, right? Now the other service for app store optimization is Mopeak. Mopeak has different services they offer, including random installs for you know your mobile games and reviews. They also offer other things that I don't know are really necessary. Personal page at art blog, a personal marketing strategy manager, an animated promo video. So as you get to the more expensive, it becomes more all-inclusive where they just do everything for you. Whereas the newbie side, you gotta do some more work. Now, now I don't recommend one service over the other. This is just something I want you to be aware of. These services are out there if you do need them or if you choose to use them. Again, these are expensive services, so that choice is yours. So Google did a 15-minute uh, questionnaire to survey smartphone users. And the idea behind it was for Google to gather data to understand the journey that app users take from discovery to download to frequency of use to the factors that inspire loyalty or abandonment. And they did find a few key factors here. You have uh, friends help, but price matters. People try to go after apps that help them with specific tasks. Users prefer apps that are easy to navigate and easy to use. And the fourth finding is memory is a deal breaker. Taking up too much of the phone's memory is the number one app related issue that leads to consumers uninstalling an app. So that's extremely important, especially as we make video games for, for mobile devices. It's easy to create a game that exceeds 100, 200, 300 megabytes. There are even games out there that take up gigabytes of space. And I know when I'm looking to free up room on my phone, that is one of the first things to go, especially if I'm not using it every day. So Google figured out the top ways that people discover new apps. For the most part, they turn to people they trust, which are friends and family. After that, they find the apps that they're looking for just by browsing app stores. And then as you can see, you have recommended to them in the app store. They saw an ad, they read about it online, they see it shared on social networks, saw an ad while browsing the web, saw an ad on TV through search engines, saw an ad on YouTube. Most people are finding these apps from word of mouth, from friends and family, or from just random browsing on the app store. This is why ASO and maintaining positive reviews are so important. You want people to recommend your app, your game, whatever it is you're creating. Google also put together a list of deciding factors that people consider when deciding to download your game. Obviously, these are price and privacy, but there's also how often they'll use it, the description of it, how much memory is required, the reviews, the ratings, are friends and family using it, the number of users, and is there a video of the app? Now, these are all things we talked about already as being key factors of your ASO score. So with price being a factor, it was important for them to look at who is paying for apps. You know, 50% of the users have paid to download an app while the other half have never paid to download the app. So whether you decide to have a free game with in-app purchases or a paid game with no ads and no in-app purchases, there are always going to be those consumers who will be looking specifically for that type of app. And when it comes to paying for the apps, they're considering does it have the content they want? Does it have all the features or functionality that they wouldn't necessarily get with free alternatives? Do they want an app that's ad free? Are there no free alternatives? And does the app have good reviews? You know, can they justify spending that money? The next topic that they found are how often these apps are used. You know, on average, users have 35 apps installed on their smartphone and 52% of those apps are used at least weekly. Now what this tells us is that if you're making a game, you need to have constant updates. You want them to have a reason to 
use your game you want it to be fresh you don't want them to put it to the side forget about it and just be next in line to get deleted to make room for something else on their phone google also put together a list of how people prefer to access a specific activity in terms of playing games consumers are expecting a specific app they don't want it to be on a mobile website you know people don't want to go to facebook to play a game they want to play it right on their phone they, they want to be able to quickly access the game kill a few minutes and then go back to doing what they're doing the other thing that they found is people stop using apps when they're not useful or take up too much memory right so the top reasons for abandoning an app is they no longer have a need for it they just need to free up memory it wasn't as useful as they thought there was a similar app that was more useful or easier to use or they just forget about it and then there's also the app related reasons for abandoning the game and that's it takes up too much memory it has technical problems and glitches it's filled with ads the game's not as described they were receiving too many notifications it wasn't easy to use or navigate again with the ads this is why you'll see people complain about these free games that are just loaded with ads you know you load a level there's an ad you play the level there's an ad you end the level there's an ad so you're seeing three ads within the course of you know maybe 60 seconds people don't want that and honestly that could be a reason why they uninstall your game which if you have enough people uninstalling your game it's just gonna drop your ASO score but Google found out that most people will reconsider using your app or game if it's improved and trimmed down in size so if the app uses less memory than before they'll re-download it if it's redesigned and easier to use they'll re-download it if it uses less data it has new features added friends and family start using it there's all these reasons as to why people will come back to your game that's why it's important to consider these factors when you're updating your game and pushing out new patches to fix old bugs. So if you can reduce the memory size of the game, that's going to help greatly. I'll post the link in the description that will take you to this survey that Google conducted. That way you can review it on your own time and review these factors when you start designing your games. All right, so let's take a look at the Google Play Store and we'll see what people are doing for their app optimization, right? So even right at the beginning, they have great indie games. They have Battle of Polytopia, Little Alchemy, Egg, Earn to Die. So let's see what they're doing, right? So looking at Battle of Polytopia, a civilization strategy game by mid Juan AB probably just destroyed that name but as you can see you know they have a, a very clear title it gives a little bit of a description of what it is it's obviously an indie developer but they're relying on in-app purchases or microtransactions so you're not going to be bombarded with advertisements but if you look down they have their video of the game it's about 30 seconds and it gives you a good idea of what the game is all about so that's always a plus and then they have their screenshots so pick your tribe conquer enemies turn-based strategy you know you can pick what tribe you belong to I guess these are your skill trees. An example of one of the lands. But you see what I'm getting at here, right? They have tons of pictures that gives an example of what to expect when you're playing. You know, that's what people are looking for when they look at your game. And that's why this is right here at the top. So as soon as they come to this page, they're going to see your title, your reviews and ranks, and pictures and a video. Right? And then we get down to the description part. And they have gone into deep detail about the game. You know, it's not a quick, oh yeah, this is a, a real-time strategy game. 
you know they're saying what it's like that's turn-based empire builder auto generated maps you can discover small villages high tier technologies will unlock so it gives you something to look forward to once you start playing you get to explore the map and find new things to keep it fresh you can get upgraded boats epic naval battles that's pretty catchy and then you can just say you know it's free to play it's single player against AR and you must have purchased at least one tribe to help us maintain server cost so if you purchase tribes you can play online with other people so I guess that's how they cover their costs is through um, as I said, like those microtransactions. And then they also link to their website. But if you go down, you look at the reviews, you know, 170,000 reviews with a 4.4. You know, you have great reviews, but you also have them replying back. Now, all of the words that are in here also contribute to your, uh, your ASO, right? So it's not just the words that are in your description. It's also what are these people saying? What are you saying? And again, to reiterate the importance of replying back. Because when you're replying back, you're addressing their concerns, but you're also able to input some more words that could probably help boost your, your score in terms of being found, right? And then it shows you, you know, f over 5 million installs, what it's rated, your typical how much it is per an item. But it, it just goes to show you that it's a very well thought out. And then if you go back, look at another one, Egg Inc. Again, you have your video several screenshots to tell you what you get to do, research, build, there's drones, because I'm sure drones is a hot topic, right? And then you come down here, it gives you a little background. You know, again, it's not just a short, hey, hatch some chickens, build some hen houses, and that's it, that's the game. No, it goes into what it is, what it's about. There's something here for everyone. And then it goes over the features, right? And then again with your reviews. Let's see if they replied back at all. Did they reply back? No. Which is a little disconcerting, really. It would have been nice to address some of these lower stars. Because, again, that will help with your ratings. I mean, granted, they probably don't need it, but... Anything helps. Yeah. So I think I covered a lot of good aspects of ASO here. If there's anything specific about ASO or other topics you want me to cover, post them down in the comments and I'll be sure to mention them in the next videos. If you like what I'm covering, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and check out a few of my other videos. Now, I'll be making more videos related to running an indie game development company. So I'll see you next week. Thank you.